Yeah, diabetes is the rise of sugar in your blood, and we'll talk about why that's important. But normally, your blood sugar should only be between 70 and 120. Uh, things that lead to increased sugar in your blood are things like aging, diet, lifestyle, obesity, definitely a big one. Now, when you think about diabetes, it's important to remember there's two types. Type 1, where your body no longer produces any insulin. Type 2 is the one that's most common, about 90%, is where your body either does not produce enough insulin or is not able to utilize the insulin it produces uh, on its own. So what happens throughout the day is your body's going through this checks and balance up and down system where you eat and your blood sugar goes up and your body secretes insulin, brings your blood sugar down. And then you get hungry again, you eat again, blood sugar goes up, insulin brings it down. And what's happening every time that goes on is your body's under a lot of stress. And what we're finding is due to these different lifestyle activities, it's causing this insulin to not be as effective in bringing your blood sugar down. Now, when you have these uh, signs and symptoms, you're going to notice things like increased thirst, increased urination, and increased appetite. What happens is if you understand insulin's relationship to glucose is insulin is necessary to open a door to allow glucose into your cell. So as glucose travels in your bloodstream to go throughout your bodies and reach the cell, that insulin needs to act as a key and open that door to allow sugar into the cell for energy. What happens is, is if that keyhole is clogged with you know, increased weight gain or you know, poor diet, things like that, then the key can't open the door and glucose doesn't enter the cell and it remains in your blood where this affects your whole body is your kidneys start to work really hard to try and get rid of that glucose because it knows that it's too high and what you'll see then is increased urination to try to get rid of the glucose what that leads to is feelings of dehydration which means you'll drink more and because the sugar can't enter the cell your body will send signals saying I need more energy eat more food so you'll see all those uh, very simple signs and symptoms and when we assess patients we'll also notice things like blurred vision headache um, cold extremities or even decreased sensation in their extremities um, as we assess them in the hospital we'll notice that they'll have very poor wound healing because they're having decreased oxygen and blood flow to certain areas of their body they're not able to actually feel sensations or pain in certain parts of their body meaning they might cut their foot by walking out in the yard and not even realize that it's cut where you and I would feel it what happens is that sugar in the blood harbors bacteria and it causes that wound to be unable to heal certainly as quickly and maybe even unable to heal in the long term so it can lead to gangrenous uh, extremities and even amputation which is very common also we'll see UTIs very common in women so how we want to check this is just do a random blood sugar uh, check at any time we'll notice that if it's above 200 that's a good sign that you might either be pre-diabetic or actually have diabetes so once we get to that point we have see the signs and symptoms we've tested you we need to do two things focus on nutrition and focus on exercise again if your body has keyholes that insulin needs to open to allow glucose into your cell and those keyholes get clogged through poor diet increased fats um, carbs and alcohol then we need to cut those things from your diet. Those are going to make a big change in how well your body can use the insulin it does produce. Uh, the other thing is by exercising, it allows your body to utilize insulin even up to 72 hours after an extra, uh, exercise session. So very important to focus on those two things. Uh, depending on how strict your uh, diet needs to be will be correlated to how severe your diabetes is. Um, if you go ahead and talk about some of the other things that deal with high blood sugar stress is a big one it can actually increase it dramatically depending on the stress level you're under you need to monitor your sugar more closely um, as we try and talk about t treating your blood sugar and diabetes then we look at insulin as the main cohort um, we're going to find that there's rapid short long lasting intermediate acting uh, all these different insulins will determine how we can control your blood sugar throughout the day. The other thing that helps your body use the insulin it produces and even produce a little more is something called oral hypoglycemics. So we can there, uh, therefore treat a lot of type 2 diabetes with this treatment because their body does produce some insulin. Um, if you understand those things and understand the relationship between insulin and sugar, then we realize that um, there are some simple ways to treat this and even be able to avoid those long-term complications.
Thank you for watching A Wise Way. Subscribe to stay updated, share to pass the knowledge, or view our other videos on the left.